Hi, this is Pastor Mike Bowen from East Lumberton Baptist Church, and welcome to Wednesdays in the Word. Today's scripture I want to share with you comes out of Matthew 25 and verse 41, where the Bible says, Then shall we say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, in the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. There's a story told about a preacher one time that was pastoring in a church, and he had a guy in his church who was a member that wasn't saved, and, and, and the pastor knew he wasn't saved, knew the guy wasn't born again. And he was in church preaching one day, preaching his heart out, and he could tell that guy was in a deep conviction, but he wouldn't walk the aisle and get saved. So when the service came to an end, the pastor was back in the back shaking hands like pastors do, and that man passed by, the older member passed by, and the pastor felt convicted to talk to him, so he put his arm around him and said, Sir, come here a second, I want to ask you a question. He said, oh, Sir, are you sure if you died you're going to heaven? And this guy was a church member. He said, No, pastor, I'm not sure about that. I'm not saved. I joined this church as a young child, but I'm truly not saved. He said, Well, son, why not get saved? I could tell today you were under conviction. Why not get saved? He said, Pastor, well, I want to get saved, but I just can't get saved right now. He said, why not? Because I could tell the Spirit of God was working on you. He said, well, I can't get saved because in my heart, I'm mad at somebody, and I got bitterness towards somebody, and I can't let it go. And I know if I get saved, God's going to tell me to forgive that person, and I can't forgive him. I don't want to let it go. They did me wrong. They hurt me. I'm not going to let it go. And the pastor said, sir, just give your heart to Christ. God will take care of that. God will, will take that bitterness away and put love in your heart. He said, oh, no, pastor, I'm not forgiving that person. He made me man. And I know if I get saved, that God's going to call me to do that. So I'm not getting saved. And the spirit of God was drawing him. But he said, no, I'm not getting saved. So the pastor let him go home. And that night the pastor went home. He was laying in his bed. And he got a call about 3 o'clock in the morning. And the pastor answered that phone and said, hello. And, I, and a guy told the pastor, he said, pastor, you don't know me. He said, but... My neighbor's one of your members. And there's some horrible screaming coming out of that house. I don't know what's going on. Will you please just go by and check things out? So the pastor got in his car and put his clothes on and rushed to this guy's house. And when he pulled in the driveway, he knew whose house it was. It was the guy he talked to in church that Sunday. The guy you talked to about salvation and wouldn't get saved. And he went upstairs. As he walked in the house, he could hear that guy screaming. He could hear him screaming loudly. He had no idea what was going on. As he got to climb the stairs, the screaming got louder and louder and louder. And when he finally made his way in that room, the guy was laying there in the bed and his wife was sitting there. She was dumbfounded. She had no idea what was going on. And, and the guy was screaming loud and loud and loud. And when he saw the preacher, he said, thanks, preacher, for coming. He said, preacher, help me. Please help me. And the guy, and the preacher said, sir, what's wrong? What's going on? He said, preacher, they're coming for you. They're coming to get me. Can't you see them? He said, see what? He says, look outside the window. They're coming for me. The demons, they're coming for me. And the pastor couldn't see a thing. And about a few seconds passed guy, and the guy began to scream again. He said, Pastor, I can hear them now. They're dragging chains up the stairs. They're coming to get me, Pastor. They're coming to get me. Please help me. Help me. And about a few seconds passed by, and the guy screamed again. He said, Pastor, they're right there at the foot of my bed. Oh, Pastor, they're going to get me. They said, Pastor, right now, they're about to chain my arms up. And the pastor watched this guy's arms go like this and go like this. And he said, Pastor, they got chains now. They're going to chain my feet together. And the pastor watched his feet that were separated like this. All of a sudden, go like this. And all of a sudden, the guy just died right there in the bed. And Rick and Morty set in right away. And his wife said, Pastor, I don't know what's going on. All I know is he laid in his bed and he kept saying, it's right here. It hurts right here. I can't tell what's going on. And the pastor turned to that man's wife and said, ma'am, I'll tell you what's going on. That man had bitterness inside his heart. He had a sin lodged in his heart that he would not let go. And those demons came and took that guy and drugged that guy to hell. And when the doctor came in to analyze that man, he recognized that rigor mortis set in right away. And when they pulled that guy back from that bed, they could see his hairs against the framework, the headboard of that bed, where he pressed his head up against that bed so hard because he was in pain and anguish and the demons were chaining him up. For as the word of God says, hell is no joke. The Bible says hell is a real place. Matthew 25, 41 says hell is a place prepared for the devil and his angels. Hear me, my friends. God didn't make hell for you. God made hell for the devil and the demons of hell. And the Bible says the devil and his angels. Because when God kicked Satan out of heaven, God kicked out a third of the angels and they are demons. You cannot believe in an angel not believe in a demon. A demon is simply a fallen angel. That's why Matthew 25, 41 says that hell is made for the devil and all his angels. They are demons. And the word of God said God didn't make hell for you. 
But if you die without Jesus Christ, if you reject the Son of God, you will go to a place called hell. It's not because God doesn't love you. God loves you, and God has proved that love to you by sending His Son to go to the cross and die. There's no doubt that God loves you, but if you reject the Son, the Bible says you will go to a devil's hell. And I don't want to see you go to hell, my friends. If God's speaking to you right now through my devotion, and the Holy Spirit of God is gripping you like a vice, and the Holy Spirit of God is drawing you, I want to challenge you. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait until a demon climbs your step and change your legs and change your feet and drags you into hell. You come to Christ now and be saved by the grace of God because God did not make hell for you. God made hell for the devil and his angels and the word of God said hell is a prepared fire. The hottest fire man's going to face is a fire that man prepares. If you go outside of a pair of that grill for a cookout, it's going to be hot. And God said hell is a place that's prepared for the devil and his angels. Do not go to a place called hell. Turn to Christ. Repent of your sin. Ask God to save you. And the Bible says whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Let's pray. Father, I pray now, God, for those who may not know you as Savior and Lord, those right now watching this devotion who are not yet born again, I pray the Spirit of God will get a hold of their heart and convict them and show them, God, their need for a Savior. And I pray they'll call on you before it's everlasting too late and experience the salvation only you can grant. So, God, minister to hearts now, for I pray in Jesus' sweet, precious, and holy name. Amen and amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week for our next study in Wednesdays in the Word.